I love the way that his work uh, is really a story, not about being Dominican per se, um, even though that is a very important part of his work, most notably in his masterful use of color, but about human beings. He's a storyteller. He's always exploring different kind of things. Uh, you know, no se está tranquilo, you know. He's always uh, thinking and doing something the same way that he's in front of the easel. And I thought, well, I have to meet this person because this work is really amazing. So when I met Rigo, I didn't realize that he would be open to having a studio here at the Banana Factory. I think he's inspirational to other people because he's out there and he's doing it. He is constantly painting. I don't know Rigo when he's saying, oh, I just, I don't know what to do right now. I'm, you know, sort of in a dry spell. But I cannot, uh, you know, give you the title or tell you this and that because he, you know, he's such a prolific artist. He got so much work. I have seen so much work of him throughout the years that I cannot even start, you know, to describe that. Una máquina, una máquina fuerte, muy sensible, y se siento que él no es, muchos artistas quedan estancados, y él no, él siempre está tratando de buscar nuevos retos. In elementary school, when I was a child, I had the opportunity to observe an art teacher drawing. That impressed me quite a bit. I saw the drawing come to life. My spring it was born to move forward and join with other streams and to converge into a river that flows in the YZ of art. He's easy to laugh, he's easy to be with, he's, he's generous in spirit. And I think that as a person comes through because whatever story he's telling in his pictures or his paintings, they become equally important that he's being that generous with his emotional knowledge. I, I seen Rigo's work before meeting Rigo and I was intrigued with his symbolism, how he came about his symbolism, and what, what he was thinking about with that symbolic work. Rigo is a penultimate, I think, storyteller. Um, and he does it through this pastiche of images that combine uh, both fantasy and memory and combine cultures and combine urban environments with rural environments. It's, um, they're almost meant to be interpreted uh, through various different lenses. New York was the city that abducted me when I left my country in a search of a dream. Not a so-called American dream, but the dream to become a respected artist and to be known worldwide. I met uh, Mr. Rigo Peralta the first time in 1999, when I was uh, the director of the Dominican Cultural House here in New York. At that time, uh, I remember uh, Rigo came to us and uh, asking for an opportunity to exhibit his works. I was very impressed. And I was so impressed that I finally, at the end of the exhibition, I bought the work and I have it in my house. That's actually the first portrait I ever wanted to buy uh, on a personal level and for a museum even. Um, when you look at the portraits here, um, they're all very traditionally depicted in European, uh, through, a, through artists who are European trained in traditional modes. Um, they represent traditional 18th, 19th, 20th century portraiture. Rigo's portrait of his grandmother is none of those things. Um, it uses materials in really creative ways. Um, it, you really, um, it's a phenomenal depiction of his grandmother and you, you, you see both his love for his grandmother as well as her personality coming out.
you can see also the difference how his art is kind of evolving um i've seen it going from you know in some phases of his artistic life it's it's more abstract than others and i see him now moving more toward realistic kind of drawings and paintings we have started a postmodern era and being part of this revolution is my legacy in this earth of metal and agriculture. When he chooses these rich colors, it is not just about making a body and a machine and clouds and poured areas or whatever. It is about being an alchemist. It is about being a scientist. It is about choosing quietly when no one is around. I admire H&R Cargo, Salvador Dali, Rembrandt, Picasso, and one of the artists that really impressed me a lot is um, Ramon Oviedo from Dominican Republic too. In Rigo's work, you got a little bit of everything. You got a, a, the surreal ideas, you got the realistic idea, you got, you know I mean? It, it's a combination of a lot of things. He's a painter, painter, he's very painterly. You know, he used colors, he used, uh, you know, the sense of drawing. That doesn't mean that he have to draw with a pencil, he draw with a brush. And that is uh, very much a storytelling. Pero, pero su trabajo, si me dice, me habla muchos, como le decía, sin, sin conocer muchas cosas de él, ya lo estoy viendo ahí. Lo, lo, lo veo. El, eh, hay ciertas partes que son inocentes. So when he's happy, he's really, really happy. When he's not happy, he's really, really not happy. He's intense, you know. And I feel with Rigo, he's He's a large man, you know, grande. And uh, to have that, again, it's like a juxtaposition. So he's known on a lot of different levels. And I think that Rigo is so quiet and humble that I wasn't really aware until recently the extent of, you know, people here in the United States. My next project is a series of international exhibition shows in Abu Dhabi, um, Costa Rica, Mexico, Dominican Republic, among other countries. How I see the, the, a lot of the colors that he uses, a lot of the symbolism with the headdresses on the women, and some of the men look almost Mayan, you know, as juxtaposed with this very industrial sort of a thing. It's definitely a sensibility that has um, mucho sabor to it. There isn't, I think, at this point, one word because he's breaking all the rules. And he is bringing in, he's bringing in what is there in the atmosphere. I think he is taking some trance level creative energy and he's composing he, like a musician composing something that has never been done before que se va desarrollando pues voy colocando otras capas que realmente no enconden lo que está atrás porque siempre está presente pero está presente como un fantasma que el fantasma a veces tú no puedes verlo de repente pero puedes sentirlo uh, rigo is a mystic you know he, he makes things happen. He lives in that space between his knowledge and his skill as a painter and his brilliant mind to create something out of nothing, to bring things into being. Uh, the reason that he is successful and he will continue is because he got passion. He loves what he's doing. Nothing else, you know what I mean? You cannot go any farther than that. If it speaks to me, if it takes my breath away, if it makes me forget my name, then it will do the same for other people. Rigo has the potential of doing a lot of work uh, with museums, doing a lot more work in terms of understanding um, urban influences and and Latin influences and how they come together. Hablando su perrito como chiquito, pero cuando pinta es un un tremendo volcán, verdad? But I think he's very, very authentic and 
what really comes from his heart ends up on the painting. So I think that Rigo's um, future is really bright both as an artist as well as in a force within the community. You should try to be the sun, not the moon. Be the source, not the reflection. See, Rigo is the source. Rigo is the sun.